When we want to change the colour of something in a photo, the tool most people turn to is the colour replacement brush. But there's a big problem that you may have noticed. It doesn't work with grey objects. Let me show you why using this photo, which has a lot of grey. Then I'll show you what to do about it. You'll find the colour replacement brush in the tools palette on the left of the photo persona interface. It's grouped with a couple of other tools, so one of those may be visible instead. If one of the other tools is visible, click on the icon and hold down your mouse button. When the other tools in the group appear, we can then select the colour replacement brush. Next, we want to select the colour we want to use by clicking on the colour swatch at the bottom of the tools palette. This opens a colour picker dialog where we can choose our new colour. When we've done that, we can then paint over the pipe that we want to recolour. Except nothing seems to happen. And it's easy to think that the colour replacement brush isn't working, but it is working. Let's increase the tolerance setting to 100% so that the brush affects the widest range of pixels when we paint. This time we can see the colour replacement brush is having an effect. The only problem is that it's still too weak. This means that if we want to replace the grey with say a vibrant blue colour, we can't. In a moment I'll show you the solution, but first you need to understand why the colour replacement brush doesn't work how you expected it to. Let's start by sampling the pipe's colour using Affinity Photo's colour picker tool. You'll find it near to the top of the tools palette, and it has an icon showing an eyedropper. Once it's selected, I'll move my mouse pointer over the pipe to the area I want to sample. I can then click once to sample the colour, which we then see in the colour swatch at the bottom of the panel. If I then double click the swatch, it opens the colour chooser dialog with my sampled colour visible. Now, I should stress that my dialog may look different to yours. That's because the tools we see in this dialog are controlled by the drop down here. You can see what I mean if I change the setting to use the RGB controls. Now to help us understand what's going wrong with the colour replacement brush, we need to use the hue setting here. This displays a hue strip along the top of the dialog. Now the hue is what most people think of when we talk about colour, but it's only one component. When I click on the different areas of the pipe using the colour picker tool, we see the hue changes. But in every case, notice that the colour is on the left side of this dialog, where everything looks grey. The colours I'm sampling appear grey, because they don't have much saturation. Think of this colour swatch as being like a graph. The horizontal axis is what's controlling the level of saturation. On the left, the saturation value is low. This means that if we want to use one of the stronger blues from the right side of the dialog, we need to increase the saturation. Notice this moves the sample point to the right where all the strong colours are. Then, if I move the sample point up or down rather than left or right, it's affecting the lightness. But notice something. It doesn't matter where I move the colour sample point on the dialog, it doesn't change the hue. The hue value always remains the same. The only way to change that is to move the hue slider control at the top of the strip. This is the key to understanding what the colour replacement brush does in Affinity Photo. It isn't replacing the colour, it's only changing the hue component of the colour. It doesn't affect the saturation or the lightness. That's why a grey object like the pipe doesn't appear to be affected when we paint over it. But that's also why it's such a good tool for replacing the colour of objects like clothing. Because it only affects the hue, it creates a realistic and natural effect. Now we've got that out of the way, let's look at a way to change the colour of the pipe so that it's a strong blue colour. The way to do that is by using the recolour adjustment layer. You can add this to the image by clicking the adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the Layers Studio panel. When I click that, we see the different adjustment layers, and I can click the recolour option. We now see a dialogue with three sliders, hue, saturation and lightness. These are the same three components of colour that we were looking at in the colour chooser dialog. To turn the pipe blue, all I need to do is move the hue slider to select the blue that I want to use. 
This time it's producing a strong blue colour because the saturation is at 100%. If I reduce the saturation to a low value, the colour seems to vanish from the image and that's what was happening with the colour replacement brush. The only problem now is that the colour change from my layer is affecting the entire image which I don't want. So what I'm going to do is hide it using a mask. To add the mask to the layer I'll first select the recolor layer in the Layer Studio panel. I'll then hold down the Option key on my keyboard. If you're using a Windows PC that's the Alt key. I can then click on the mask icon to display a menu where I can choose the empty mask option. This adds a mask that's filled with black to the layer, hiding its effect from the image. If you're using Affinity Photo version 1, you won't have this feature. Instead, you'll just need to add a regular white mask by clicking the same icon, and then you'll need to invert it to turn it black. Now that the layer is hidden by the mask, I can use the Paintbrush tool to paint white onto the mask. This will reveal the recolor layer in the areas where I paint. But what's also helpful when using the recolor layer is that I can continue to change the colour. This technique, by the way, is a great way to recolor old black and white photos. Now, at the start of this video, I demonstrated the colour replacement brush, but didn't really explain it. To learn how to use it properly, watch this video next. Thanks for watching today, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and please visit my website for more tutorials. I'll see you soon for another video.